Hello, it's Scott Kennedy with Scout.com coming to you out of the FoxSports.com offices out of Los Angeles. One of the common questions I get every year is, who's the best player you ever saw? Last year that question was answered for me pretty easily when I said running back Noel Devine. We'll, we'll talk more about him another time, but this, today I want to talk about the best defensive player I've ever seen. He was the number one linebacker in the class of 2005. He's a redshirt sophomore at, at Auburn. His name's Trey Blackman. Trey Blackman is, without a doubt, the best defensive prospect I've, I've ever scouted. At about six foot and 195 pounds, the number one linebacker in the country, it showed that you don't always have to be the biggest to be the best. Uh, one of the reasons why we projected him so high, though, despite the fact that he was a little undersized, is because Steve Pardue, the head coach at LaGrange, he said, he said, he told me when I went to see Trey, he said, Scott, this, this kid's going to put on 25 pounds easy when he gets to school. So if you picture when we show you him running around and hitting people at 195 pounds, Picture him doing that at about 220 pounds, and you'll see why he was such a good prospect. In the 2004 season, LaGrange was marching towards a state championship, and, and Shaw High School was seen as one of the teams that was going to be standing in their way. They're, uh, they're big rivals. Trey got this game off to a pretty good start on Shaw's first possession. <laughs> See the way he attacks the ball carrier. Relentless is a term that's used often, but I don't think it's used any better when describing Trey Blackman and how he just attacks ball carriers, attacks the def uh, attacks the opposing offensive backfield. You see the strength that he has. You know the quarterback for Shaw is actually bigger than him. And Trey is just able to sling him around like a rag doll. This next play is going to look awfully familiar to Auburn fans and probably a little too familiar to Florida fans. Blackman's coming on the blitz again, and he's after the quarterback and is able to wrap him up. Just game-changing plays, forcing the fumble. Watch him in pursuit, too. It's not just attacking forward. Watch him attack laterally. Another play, another example like that. He's from the left side, coming across the field. The running back gets the corner, and there's Blackman. ability to read a play also. It's not just the attacking, it's the ability to read. He goes after, he, he reads tailback and then circles around and still gets in on the tackle on, on the quarterback. He does the same thing on this play. Reads quarterback and then he circles back around and gets in on the running back. That change of direction is one of the things that makes him so special. he do in the open field though? You see the guy lined up in the slot again, which was bad news for the Shaw receiver, but it's just out there one-on-one -on -one with Trey. Trey breaks down, wraps up both of his legs, and is able to make the, make the hit. How about special teams? This blur you see coming by is Blackman. So you got a good look at Trey Blackman in action while he was at LaGrange. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't just Trey Blackman on that team, but that was definitely the hardest hitting team I've ever watched. Several of those guys ended up signing with Kentucky. Braxton Kelly was a defensive end, uh, played, started as a middle linebacker at Kentucky. Demario Ford, who you don't usually hear too much about wide receivers, but this was a team, if it doesn't matter where you were on the field, if you didn't have your head on a swivel, someone was going to plant you. Demario Ford was one of those guys. Some of the best hits that the Grangers had all year was Demario Ford coming back on a crack block. They were just a lot of fun to watch. Travis Hart, the middle linebacker for that team. Usually what they'd do is they'd turn, uh, they'd turn Braxton Kelly and Trey Loose in the backfield and then Travis Hart, the big hammer, it would clean things up. So that was one of the best, that was one of the hardest hitting teams I've ever seen. They won a state championship at LaGrange. Want to move on just a little bit before we get out of here. Uh, I watch a lot of digital games. I watch, uh, I watch a lot of games from beginning to end and in doing so I keep a folder on my hard drive called the Hit Reel. If I see a real good hit, I like to keep it, and uh, I said one day I'm going to put a bunch of them together and, and show them to you on a uh, film that we'll just call the hit reel. So here's a look at some of those hits. This next set of clips comes from a Deerfield Chaminade scrimmage in South Florida. Yes, I said that again, scrimmage, and has some of the best hits I think I've ever seen. Oh 
this next hit I want to preface with this clip. I want you to watch number six right there. The minute I saw that, I said to myself, that guy needs to get off the field. He doesn't need to be anywhere near a football field. And this is why. Players that put forth that little bit of effort are going to get hurt. Son, keep your head up. St. Thomas Aquinas last year was taken on Northwestern in what was just a pure mismatch, but I never really felt that the Northwestern team was in danger until this play. Not just one, but two. I wouldn't be doing the St. Thomas Aquinas team injustice unless I brought up Major Wright. Oh! You ever seen a player make a tackle with a pulling guard? I hope you enjoyed the segment on Trey Blackman and the hit reel that we got to show you and we'll have more for you all through the summer as we give you more Scout TV segments. This is Scott Kennedy from Scout.com reporting to you from the Los Angeles offices of FoxSports.com.